uh, as far as hypersensitivity and in combination with the other sensory channels, uh, that's a bit difficult to uh, handle at this page, stage without a personal interview. You, you don't, it takes more words to get an idea of what the patient means by hypersensitivity versus conventional sensitivity. All of the senses being hypersensitive, anecdotally, I wouldn't say that was, that was particularly common, sorry, but I wouldn't say it wasn't visual snow. There are certainly um, individuals that I um, investigate on a daily basis that would, that would say that's their, their experience, certainly. Yeah, it's a very interesting question as to whether sensory hypersensitivity is common in visual snow. Um, it, it's a, it's a, a short question with a very long answer that is summarised as yes. A good proportion of patients with visual snow will seem generally more sensitive. Usually they're the people who have visual snow and have migraine and I think it's the migraine biology combined with the visual snow biology that makes them very much more sensitive across the range of their senses. Does, does visual snow cause hypersensitivity of other senses basically is what you're saying. Um, yes, I mean photophobia which is one of the diagnostic criteria established so far, yes, I mean that's a hypersensitivity to, um, to sunlight. So I do think that in a hyper excitability state visual snow can cause you to be more sensitive to other stimuli, for sure, and, and a lot of patients consistently experience that and it bothers the heck out of them.